So we're back at the Portuguese Masters. Jumped back in the car, didn't we? Came to see these last few holes. Jordan Smith, I believe, is leading at the minute. Yeah. I think well, he's got three shots lead with seven or six holes to go. Correct. Okay. We're gonna go on um, we're gonna go and watch him literally figure out how we make birdies because mm -hmm. spoiler alert, we just played 18 holes and we didn't make <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go see how it's done. Maybe some of the decisions they're making on these last few holes. Yeah. Again, real real life situation tournament. Uh, have a bit of golf chat along the way as well and show you some golf swings, let's do it. So back out on this side of the course, we've got a bit closer to the last few groups, you can see loads more people, so this green is loaded with people. Up to 13T up there, short-ish par 3. Eddie Beck, Kudak. Oh, nice shot. Good shot, man. Money that. Really interesting there. We were just talking briefly there uh, into this par three about what shapes we would be hitting into there after playing golf today. And straight away, what did you say, Mr. Lockett? You said you would be clubbing down and, and hitting it harder. Yeah, yeah. Pathetic, isn't it? It's strange. Because all day, like I don't, yesterday I don't do and today, you no. clubbed up and hit it. Soft, hit it soft. Um, <laughs> So where's, where's your answer for that under this? Why would that dictate your decisions there? Why would you be clubbing down and hitting it harder? I don't know, I just think it makes you more aggressive. Yeah. I think, but I've only I've come here and I realise that. Yeah. I, 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 how much have I been short over the last two days? Every, every yeah, single so shot really. I've just realised I need to visit harder, <laughs> basically. <laughs> just need to stop being a pansy. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting just how, as well, your environment, so the people, pressures will dictate your decisions. I think I'd try and remain pretty pretty similar in terms of trying to feel more club and softer, but under certain pressures it makes you do different things. So yeah. possibly clubbing down and hitting it harder, trying to get the clubbed on the ball. Mm. This ball. Mm. Nice shot. Right, he hit it Mars right, didn't he? I think it's amazing. Again, we said this on the first day, just how little the ball actually curves in the air. Doesn't curve. Doesn't curve much, does it? No, like it there's curve. people trying to hit these big sling balls and trying to play a lot like 10, 15, even up to 20 yards of curvature at times, but really these boys. It's either a good player thing or or not. It doesn't really curve much. It doesn't curve at all, does it? No. Oh. I definitely feel, I feel like for me, I need to calm my curvature down. Mm. So my path and face relationship, but it makes sense, right? If your face and path relationships are relatively neutral, yeah. you're going to play relatively neutral golf, aren't you? Yeah, 100%. Uh, minimal. Minimal. Minimal curvature. Pit stop. Yeah, the low fat. Huh? The low fat. <laughs> Where's the burger wrappers? What burger? <laughs> it's just a wrapper, I find. <laughs> That's a joke, isn't it? Mm. 230 to 240. Get it to there. Into this par five. 
and that's to get to minus 31. I'm gonna quit. <laughs> I'm gonna quit I'm debating. <laughs> Stuff like that, just thinking about that and seeing those shots into a par five when you lead in a tournament there was no bay lag <laughs> it was like I've got the tournament won but I'm, I'm actually now going to show you why I'm winning yeah not I'm going to just bleed myself home <laughs> yeah he's, the, he's pretty much the only the only guy today I've seen draw the golf ball yeah it's uh, pretty mental and just talking a little bit about bit about score I believe that the I'm, I'll have to google this in a minute actually but the lowest European tour DP World Tour 72 hole score is around 28 I think er, Ernie Els did a did one a while ago like early 2000 like a 28 or 29 I, I think this is lowest 72 hole score if Smith can uh, finish well here I think it's uh, adding insult to injury from today I think for us yeah <laughs> What, no birdies? Not a single no birdie. Bird, not even a sniff. Not even a whiff of one. And I've just watched the guy rifle what would probably be a five wood. <laughs> not a three wood, probably yeah. a five wood to about 15 feet mm. for it, 31 under par. Here you go. Any good. Portugal Masters wrapped up. Wrapped up for another year. We'll be back for me. We will. So we're just in the guys' tee off pretty much on on 18. The leaders see Smithy get to uh, get to minus 30 there on 17. Um, pretty good golf that, isn't it? Different level, isn't it? It's nearly get ran over. Yeah, that's real life. <laughs> behind the scenes of behind the scenes. Here we go. More cars in the fucking way. But yeah, that was proper golf. Seven and a half under. Again, he's still got the last to yeah, play. Yeah, but he's done that on the back of shooting decent scores yesterday. Yes, yeah. So he's, he, hasn't, he hasn't nudged it round to the win. He's gone yeah. and won it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, um, I don't know how many, how many times has he won? Uh, he's won once, hasn't he? He's won once. Oh, this will validate a few things. We'll have to it? have a look, but yeah. Um, good stuff, just in the guys off the last. We'll have a chat about it later over a drink. Uh, some more observations, but yeah, until next year. Uh, Portugal Masters, let's chat later. So I thought it'd be cool to just jump in and just summarise really my findings and my observations from going and watching the event, seeing it from afar and just watching watching some of the world's best players get at it. And just firstly, just how good the golf was that Jordan Smith played as well. Um, minus 30 is ridiculous no matter what golf course you're playing. Um, now it was soft, the rough was down, but still any golf course you've got to go around there and shoot the numbers and he certainly did that. You've just seen uh, me highlight actually talking to Pete about the shot that he hit into 17, which was, I said to him, it was one of the best golf shots I've ever seen in person. To see him play it in that circumstance as well and then to bomb the drive down 18, um, hats off, to, hats off to, uh, to Jordan there. But I think my observations are mainly coming from how the guys go about hitting their shot shapes. Now, although it is very subtle when you go and actually watch their ball flights, there's not loads of curvature. I'd say there's more players which hit fades, especially with irons. And when it was a fade, it was very minimal. So there wasn't much curvature at all. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna definitely take away and, and learn from. Um, I don't think it's, I think for these guys that are at the top of the game to see the ball curve lots, I don't think they can get at pins. I don't think they can hit into areas that they want to. Or they can definitely do it. They can definitely hit the ball big right to left, big left to right when they need to. That's a skill uh, and their ability to do that. But when they're playing their, we'll call it stock or their shot that's most suited to them or what they're trying to hit, it's very minimal. And then another observation was when we watched the 14th or 15th, it was a short drivable par four. I think it was 3.30 to the front. Um, and we watched a lot of golfers, pretty much every golfer bar one, hit driver and get it as close as they can to the to the hole and we didn't see one birdie from a player that drove it close to the green they were coming in with nothing but because of the location they was coming in from they had no shot no access to the pin 
couldn't stop it because the pin was really tight to the left and to the back of the green. It was three paces from the edge of the bunker and then three paces from the left. So really tight, hot, tight um, hole location to get it close to the flag. And all the golfers that were driving it close were coming off with par or bogey or worse. And the one golfer that we saw lay back made the birdie, hit it to eight foot and then rolled the put in. So I'll hold my hands up and, at times and say, I've definitely coached golfers to get it as close to the hole as possible because statistically we're more likely to get it in the hole in less amount of shots but i think in some scenarios certainly an observation that i've made is that depending on pin location depending on how close we can get to that flag from being for example short side or out the rough you need to sometimes play to the fairway and lay back just to get the control sometimes a steeper descent angle down so you can get close to flag so i, I think you've got to be really careful with when you actually get it as close to the green as possible and sometimes playing conservatively, playing for the fairway and giving yourself the best chance on the next one. But yeah, it's been really good to go out and watch them guys play. Some cool observations, definitely adjusted some of my thoughts just from refreshing and seeing these guys play. Hope you can learn a little bit from watching and viewing and uh, yeah, take some of that stuff to the golf course.